got flour, sugar, and tea. Oh, no, no, no. So they gave to those old families. I got flour. Hey, this is Archie Rowe at my kitchen table with another YouTube uh, episode of uh, Yarn and Tea. Uh, young, up and coming. Uh, singer-songwriters, First Nation singer-songwriters. And today I'll be talking to uh, Marlon Motlop and Rulla Kelly Mansell about their music and uh, what inspires that. So anyway, so it's good to, good to catch up with you fellas, Marlon and Rulla. Uh, since March this, uh, this year, when you, I know you, you got me out of breakfast. I just finished breakfast and say, come up and I didn't know what was going on actually. And said, just said, yeah, come up and and have a yarn or something, and then you, you, you hit me with this song, and I thought it just blew my socks off. You know, I just thought, what? You know, shut the front door. It was amazing. <laughs> and uh, but but yeah, I'm so glad I did. But it's good to catch up with you again, and and have a yarn to you about I don't know a little bit about you know where you're from and and uh, your music as well. But what? What you listened to, I suppose, when you were younger, and what uh, influenced you or got you playing music in the first place. So I know I'll, I'll probably start with Marlon. I, I, I. So where, where, where are you from, Marlon? Where's your mob from? Yeah, um, so I'm from Darwin, up in the Northern Territory. So I was yeah, born and bred in Darwin. Um, my father, I'll start with his side of the family, um, all, you know, 20,000 of them. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so my, my grandmother on my father's side was a Larrakia woman uh, from the Darwin area. So the Larrakia traditional owners of the Darwin, Darwin area and surrounding areas. And um, yeah, my, my dad's dad was also a, a Torres Strait Islander man from Thursday Island. So he, um, yeah, he, he uh, made his way to mainland Australia um, at a young age on the, on the pearling lagers and um, yeah, that's how we kind of got to Darwin. And on my mother's side, she's a Kwinarikan woman from uh, the Finnish River Plains, uh, just out of Darwin. Oh, do we? Oh, that's good. And uh, yeah, Rollo, what about what, what about you and, and your family? I know you. Yeah, I know some of your family, your mother at least, and your dad. You know, so it's uh, just give us a bit of a yeah, a bit, a bit of an idea where you, where you're from and who your people are. Yeah. Yeah, well, on the complete other end of uh, of the country, Marlins Darwin, and I'm I'm from Tassie, so all the Chawitza and um, yeah, I'm Tulapunga, Pakana, Cooper and Cooper and Niara, uh, man, and um, yeah, my mum, my mum was born over on the on the islands, Flinders Island, um, little islands yeah. off of uh, off of Tassie in the Bass Strait, and um, mum and dad are both one and ten, so yeah, big family again, um, but. Um, um, my mum and dad met. Um, my dad, my dad's eldest brother, um, helped uh, start up actually the Aboriginal legal service back in Tassie back in the seventies. Yeah. Um, one of mum's first jobs was uh, was um, was working at, under Uncle Pierre, and that's how mum and dad met. Um, yeah. And then yeah, so dad dad has a wildlife sanctuary in Tassie, and yeah, yeah. from out the bush in a yeah. beautiful place up in the northern part of Tassie on the way to Cradle Mountain. Um, yeah, the the English term is is Mile Creek, but we call the region, um, and, and you know they 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 call it Mile Creek and and Delarain, but we call it Tulumpunga and Cooper and Niara. So it's yeah, a beautiful part of the part of the world that you've been to. And I've been yeah. there. Yeah, I've been there. It's great. To, okay, you so you know um, anyway, we can answer Marlon maybe. Um, what 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 do you listen to when you when you were younger? You know, what sort of music did you? You, you like or get into you, you know, or listen to at least. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, I guess, yeah. From an early age, I was fortunate. My dad was a student of music, so he yeah. he went to university, um, and yeah, yeah, studied classical guitar. So, oh, um, I, I'd always had yeah, Deadly. yeah, I'd always had a classical guitar just ringing in the background of 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 my house or ringing in the back room, and um, yeah, it, it was. I guess from the early days, from my childhood, I mean, you know, I would always had, um, I remember I bought my first CD, that was a Stevie Wonder CD, um, and then it went to, you know, Michael Jackson and, you know, Rhythm and Blues, um, and Dad was, 
dad was always playing BB King around the house as well. Um, yeah. But then, you know, I remember, you know, um, you know, being a little, little toddler, um, dad putting us to sleep to music like Pavarotti and um, Elvis. So there was a real vast um, and diverse range of music that I was listening to growing up. Um, and yeah. I think it's kind of, yeah, shaped the way that um, I guess I write songs and um, the, the way my sound comes out now, you know, it's, um, you can't really pencil it into, into one type of genre, you know, so, um, yeah, that was the early days. And then, yeah, I've kind of just grown into, you know, more rhythm and rhythm and blues as I've gotten older. Yeah, I can, I can tell in your voice when you sing that, that real R&B uh, style, the influence. And, uh, yeah, but I was, my, my music was, even when I, when I was young, I listened to all sorts of music. Uh, yeah, my foster dad was a Scots, but I listened to a lot of Scottish music, but also a lot of the black American singers like uh, Otis Redding, uh, Nat King Cole, and uh, people like that. But yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so I, I suppose because that was, that was helped me in my background uh, in music. Hey, what about you, Rollo? Yeah, quite similar in the sense of like quite a vast um, difference in, in sound, but uh, I guess my early memories of, of music, um, playing around the house, mum and dad were playing um, a lot of yourself, Uncle Archie, um, a lot of titters, um, Uncle Jimmy Little, um, yeah. yeah, and um, but then also had, uh, you know, like Midnight Oil playing and, and, yeah. and I guess yeah. the area where I'm from, there was, um, um, you know, it's quite remote and tazzy sense we'd like to have a lot of like a folk and kind of hippie kind of vibe as well um and and that was kind of the the um i guess what was happening in in, in those times when i was a younger kid but as i got a little bit older i started to discover um my older brother's um uh, rap tapes that he had um, and that's where i first got introduced i guess to to hip-hop or rap and um, yeah. you know all that yeah. 90, that 90s era um, which is, you know, iconic in a hip hop sense, um, is what I gravitated towards. But um, yeah, it was always changing. You know, I went, you know, learning guitar was the first instrument I learned. So um, yeah, I, I would also gravitate towards, you know, like um, at the time, like Rage Against the Machine and um, yeah, you yeah, know, like a lot of um, band. yeah. bands and, and, and stuff and rock and roll. And, um, and yeah, kind of that, that was my music. So just, yeah, quite, quite a range, I guess. Well, uh, that's good, you know, it's, it's, what, 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 that's what sort of interests me a lot about you know, these yarns that we're having is about, you know, like, uh, not just what, you, what you're playing, but what, 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 what you listen to you know, uh, when you were younger and perhaps, you know, influence uh, your music at all. You know, uh, I, 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 like I said, I was really, I was really impressed, impressed, it's probably not the right word, I was really, you know, uh, yeah, you, you, you slayed me with that with, with that song when you did, just did it acoustically with the guitar, just just your rap and and, and Marlon's singing. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting there going, what? You know, and uh, like like I said, uh, you know, I said, how come I never heard years before? You know, because the bigger you start, and you start talking, said, we're not playing music, you're playing footy. I'm going, yeah, look at it, yeah. and. Uh, but that's, but that's, you know, that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad that you got a, you know, that you got a chance to get up and do that song for me. Because uh, I, 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 ever since then, I, you know, I've just been, you know, uh, talking about you or, you know, or, you know, thinking about, you know, just, just telling people, I said, you, you heard these, you know, these fellows from, uh, based in Adelaide at the moment, you know, and what's, You've got a band, eh? What do you call the band again? So it's just um, Marlon X Rella, and I guess the X represents the band, um, which are all First Nations musicians, um, and they're all crazy talented in their own right as well. And um, like our drummer Nathan May, he was um, he was going to be playing before you when you were coming over. Um, yeah. yeah. Grayson, our lead guitarist, he's the head teacher. At, um, at Chasm with music and I've heard of Grace and Marlon actually grew up with there's three of them come from Darwin eh? yeah there's three of us from from the top end so Roland Archie who's um, 
Yeah, Paul Archie's son. Oh, yeah. um, Paul's a musician from up. Yeah, yeah, I know from, from Paul up. from Amanda. The old group yeah, Amanda, from Amanda, yeah. yeah, in um, Alice Springs. So um, yeah, there's yeah. I grew up with Roland playing footy. Um, grew up with Nathan May back home in Darwin. Um, we're actually cousins through oh. the Torres Strait side. So. Um, yeah. It's funny how, yeah, we'd, we'd all come down to Adelaide for different purposes. Obviously, mine was football, Roland's was football as well. And, um, yeah, we kind of, you know, myself and Rulla got together and, yeah, we just wanted to, to form a band around us and, and form a, a type of sound. And, yeah, the, the sound is now, you know, um, a collective of, um, you know, First Nations people from all over the country. Um, and then, you know, a couple are from Darwin, which is even more special, yeah, Darwin and Alice Springs. And Nate, Nate rigged me up bass play. He's, he's from Malcolm, um, down yeah, south. Yeah, yeah. Rigged me, yeah. Yeah, it's, I guess the best part about it, it all happened really organically and naturally. Yeah. Like nothing was forced. It just, yeah. it's one of those things where you look back and go, it's just almost like it, it's always been there kind of thing because it happened so so natural. And um, yeah, it's just been an absolute, it's crazy. I don't think it's only really been like 12 months like mm. that we've been doing it, um, but it feels like we've been playing forever because. You know, it's like when you when you're with mob, you just and you connect, and it's just just flows, and it just yeah, it just so it feels so good when we're even rehearsing. Like rehearsing is one of the most enjoyable parts about it, just spending time playing music together, not necessarily in front of people, but just with each other. You know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that that being said, I, I think maybe you know when when did when did you first get interested in playing? Uh, well, when you first started playing. Uh, was it original staff or were you doing covers or when you first, well I should, should, should say original, when you play, started playing your own uh, music? Uh, uh, um, Martin, what about you? Were, you? were you doing stuff before you run to Valor, playing music? Yeah, yeah. I was, um, it was a funny one because, you know, footy's been, you know, the big part of my life since growing up as well, you know, and it's kind of taken... Um, taken front seat uh, a lot of the, uh, along the way, but um, I got to about the age of, it was probably about 22, 23, where um, I guess I, yeah, I just started to find my own voice and my own sound. And um, I'd yeah. always been writing from a, from a kid, but it always been, you know, in the back room of the house and don't show anyone. But I, I felt that I started, yeah, started to get to a point where um, I started to feel like I was finding my own sound and that was um yeah. that was really empowering for myself you know and um and yeah, then once yeah. i started to work on that and started to work on my songwriting um i just remember sitting there one day and going well what's the point of feeling good about something if you're not showing anyone yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah I, I got to um yeah i started playing in um, a few gigs and a few fundraisers and and from there, you lit, lit one little gig led to another little gig, um, and then we just kept going. And um, yeah, then I run into Rulla um, through football, and then yeah, we both. Um, it was kind of like that awkward relationship where you're both sitting there waiting for someone to make the move. You know, we both knew yeah. we played football, but um, but played music and played guitar, but um, yeah, we kind of didn't have that conversation. And then one day, Rulla just said, "You know, you want to catch up and play." Um, you know, have a strum. And then from there we, yeah, kind of just started writing music together and, and wrote Black Swan, so. Yeah, uh, really, uh, you know, it's, it's good to hear, you know, that, uh, that I can see, you know, with a name like Mod Model Up, you're sure to be involved with football, you know, and uh, it's a big name in footy. A good name, good name. It's a good name in footy. And you, Rollo, when did, when did you first start you know, rapping around? You know, did you do much of that before you run into yeah. Before you, you and Marlon started um, getting together, playing? Yeah, I did a little bit. And um, I guess I always class myself as like a bit of a bedroom jammer um, as well. And <laughs> actually, it's funny, I found an old photo. Um, someone sent it through a couple of days ago. Um, yeah. When I was about 12, 12, 13, um, 11, 12, 13, um, Xavier Rudd was, came down to Tassie and was doing a lot of um, yeah. work with, with our community and our mob. Okay, is that uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, and fortunately enough, um, I was able to um, spend some time with him, um, going around and performing, doing Aboriginal dancing with my cousins, and um, when he would come out and play, and he took us. But there's this photo that I, uh, um, that I, that I got sent the other day. It's of him at Mum's house in Mole Creek, him and I, 
sitting on this lawn and he's teaching me how to play the guitar. Yeah. That was one of my first recollections of um, like learning actually how to play because I, I don't I don't really know music. Like I don't know notes and I don't know how to read music. I just know the sound of it. But that was one of my first recollections of learning how to play. And from that moment, I remember like starting to write things and trying to sing. And I learned pretty quickly that I, I wasn't a great singer. So like... Um, I started writing raps instead um, yeah. and I always had this thing of like um, like I'll, I'll try and play just my stuff the originals what I, what I could because I thought um, if I try and do a cover or if I try and do something else like I probably won't do a great job of it but if I do something that's mine no matter how it sounds or whatever even if I'm out of out of um, you know out of timing or whatever it's still my my yeah. Yeah. authentic sound and always thought that would help me be comfortable with actually playing so um, I tried to yeah write as much as what I could and play my own stuff as much as I um, I could but um, it was one of those things similar to Marlon because my footy was such a priority um, all through like my teens and um, into my 20s music was always kind of in the back background and it wasn't until probably my early 20s that I really started um, writing you know, writing raps to the, where I was taking it serious. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I would just write and write and write. And um, I remember I, I wrote Black Swan, um, was one of the first proper songs that I'd, I'd actually uh, written. Uh, and I kept it, I've just kept it there for three, like three or four years, you know. And I remember actually seeing you perform at, in Hobart with, titter, with Titters. And I said to Jill, I actually said to Jill that I have this song called Black Swan. Um, and this was still before I like decided to do anything with music um, and mentioned to Jill that I had this song called Black Swan and wanted to one day play it to yourself and um, and yeah it's just crazy how fast times evolved and um, I never thought I'd have the confidence to do what I'm doing now which is strange because I'm quite a confident person at times but it's still I don't know it's yeah kind of crazy but here we are. It's been amazing I could talk to you for ages talking about what you know. But um, we've only got limited time, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we'll have to, yeah. Is that that that's the first song that you you've collaborated on? Is it Black Swan? You used to the first one, uh, yeah. But then I guess yeah, we've written Heap. yeah, plenty more Heap. after that. So yeah, we're kind of we're in that stage now where we've got to yeah, can't, um, can't, just get into wait. the studio and, and put them all down and yeah, oh, see look. where they go, see how they grow. Can't wait, can't wait, tell you. I'm really looking forward to that. So we might get this uh, to do Black Swan for us. Uh, I, I love this. I just love it, especially the acoustic. Uh, I love the clip. That's deadly, you know, and the production from, from Jimbler. Yeah. Black, what do you call himself? Black Martin Connection Brown. now. And, but, I, but I love this acoustic version that you fellas do. Take it away. And my sisters, titters, Dan Sultan, Ken Comedy Paving the way for me and many The stand up tall, young black and deadly I'm proud and ready on the black prince to many Like Michael Long kicking goals on that telly yep. Change the date and I'll change your mind Boy, perspective, your way of life You may deny, I promise if we get this right We'll be living in our day where our days are fine But it makes me sad, we can't understand All this pain still in the land I'm a, I'm a proud Aboriginal man that's why I got our flag tattooed on my hand Cause we're the oldest in civilization Yeah, we're the coldest in a hypocritical nation So I'm waiting for the day that You're proud of my people, not mistaken this As patience on a race that are never answer me information A black swan, black swan Stand up tall when you're singing Cause you're singing for me, my man My man A black swan, black Stand up tall when you're singing Cause you're singing for me, my man My man This river and looked out the side and I saw all this land get took. Yeah, I'm sick of all these white fellas singing and they know better <laughs> when they knew never. Yeah, man, I stand up for what I believe. That's the answer. Question time. Freedom of speech with the plan, but that's why I stand. Pissed down with my hands up. I 
get asked about three times a week. My bad. If I'm Aboriginal, but see, don't matter what the colour of your skin, where you be, brother. I really need my blood back, it's the way, brother. I feel it, energy, synergy. You make me deep down, the truth is you're sick of me. Napolino, Cooper, Rooney, the Ara, Roma, Tony, Punga, Larry, yeah, Lichuita. Love for Larry and NT. Numbers West, Curry's, Murray's. All the love for all the gun, I'm on the SA. They understand what I say, cause I'm talking like it. Black Swan, Black Swan, stand up tall when you see me cause you're singing for me, my man. My man, my man, na 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 na. Black Swan, Black Swan, stand up tall when you see me cause you're singing for me, my man. My man, cause I got chills up and down my spine. They won't leave me alone, my man. What can you say? It's just, uh, uh, it's just deadly. I, I love it, you know. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to hearing the other stuff as well. You know, if the half of score is that, it's going to be too deadly. <laughs> so, yeah. um, talk, talk about the song a little bit more. While we, we've, I think we've got a bit of time. Yeah, left to do. Gonna ask ask yourself the question because I know like. Um, a part of the song, obviously it's for First Nations <clears throat> mob to feel proud where you're from, but obviously a, a part of it as well, paying homage to you know people that have paved the way for us to be able to have a voice, including yourself. How, how does it feel like um, knowing that you've had that influence on people like Marlon and myself and others coming through? How does, and, and knowing that song, you know. You don't. Yeah, it's something you don't you don't really think about, you know, when you when you're writing songs and as you start off and uh it, it's only when people come up to you and start talking to you about y your music and your songs and uh what that means to them and uh the really great thing about that is that you know, that some people have their own idea or interpretation of of, of your your songs and I d I don't even, I don't stop them. And say no, that's wrong. It means this, because I leave it up to people what they take from the song, you know. And uh, but to know that you know, you know young blokes like yourself and others, you know, uh, if I've just had a little bit, of, you know, just a little bit to 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 to, to help uh, influence them or or inspire them, probably is a better word, to 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 play music and to try and. You know, yeah, but, uh, but strive for, 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 for um, I know, excellence in that. Because what you do, what you do now, what they, just today, that's excellent, and that's excellence. And and when you actually, you know, uh, when your art, you know, pr produces that sort of excellence, uh, it just, uh, it just makes me feel 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 deadly that, you know, if in some small way. You know, I, I, I might have contributed, or, or not. You know, but but to just to, but just to just just to go ahead and open doors and pave the way. I think that's what Ruby said. It's about opening doors. My 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 late partner Ruby Hunter. You know, because I didn't really want to do a record, you know, an album the first time. Paul Kelly and them come around, and uh, I, that's what I said to her. I said. 
She said, what are you going to do? I said, what about that, Dad? Do an album, do an album. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. She goes, why not? And I said, oh, it's just not me. You know, I'm happy singing around the community and all that and family. And that's when she looked at me, put her hands on her hips, mind her, and looked at me and said, well, it's not all about you, Archie Roach. And I didn't know what she meant at first, but later on I thought about it and I think, I know what you're talking about. There's people like we've looked up to, you know, footballers like like uh, Polly Farmer and you know, City Jackson and uh, you know, Morris Rioli and, you know, and uh, Milo Rose when he was boxing, Yvonne Goulogan. Yeah, and they, 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 see when one of us signs, we all sign. And that's the influence of, of the people that we look up to. And uh, if I could you know, just inspire people to, to, to do whatever they want to do in life, then uh, I, know, I just feel very humbled about it. It's a bit of a long response, but there you go. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, a great response, but I think, yeah, we'd be, we'd be stupid not to take the opportunity now really to just thank you for, I mean, all your sounds, all your stories through your music as well, because they were, they were also big parts of, you know, my childhood and I know they were big parts of Alice's childhood, but yeah, um, yeah, it is, it, if it, it, it's given us a little glimpse of what is possible, you know, um, yeah. for a Darwin boy just who I felt like was supposed to just play football. Now I feel like I can, I can perform on stages, on world stages, you know. Oh, you sure um, can. It's only from a, a little glimpse of, a little glimpse of um, hope and a, a little image that I saw myself in, in yourself and, and I hear myself in your music when you write, you know. Yeah. Oh, look, it's, it's yeah, like you say, it's uh, brother, Matt, mum, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's just such, for me, for me, I, I'm proud. I feel proud. You make me proud. Now, because I know, like I said, over in Adelaide, you know, uh, when the time comes for me, which hopefully won't be for a little while yet, <laughs> to, to go and to, and to you know, uh, not do what I do, I'll stop playing music. What I'm happy about is that you know, young folks like yourself are just are the future. You know, they're the future of... Uh, not 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 just first nation music, but Australian music, you know, and uh, you know, new face of of music in this country, and uh, you know, he's gonna he's, he's gonna take it as you know, as far as uh, phrases as one to go. I believe I really believe that. Yeah, and so just it's up to you, is it? Yeah, it's a good point. Like with what you're saying earlier to that, like it's not just about us, you know. Like it's about you know, our mob and our community and, and the, even the generation after us, you know, coming through and, you know, like like you've inspired us and if we can inspire others, you know, young mob to, to do something as well, whether it is sports or music, but just be themselves and be comfortable being themselves and yeah. be able to speak their truths and speak their minds. And, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's the power of, of people and trailblazers, but also, you know, allowing people to be themselves. Exactly. Which is what your music's allowed a lot to do, and then hopefully ours can do the same. Ah, oh, that's deadly. All right, look, if there's, if there's nothing else you want, want to say. We could yarn for hours, couldn't we? We could. <laughs> we could, but we, you know, we've got to, we got to yeah. look at this thing. And what, what, what's been really great about this, you know, is, is getting to know you fellas, you know, not just, you know, where you're from and, and how, you, how your influences and how you started playing music. It's, uh, it's beautiful and people are going to get a lot from this. Like you say, like young know, people watching and hopefully um, you know, other young fellows that might think about you know, uh, playing music, singing, rapping, you know, you, you're just, you're just going to uh, inspire them to, to like, like, like you said. So you know, thanks for, thanks for uh, your time today. It's been it's it's been too deadly. Uh, like you say, we could keep on talking all day, but we haven't got time, uh, which is a shame. But um, 
Marlon Motlop, you know, and Rala Kelly Manson. Uh, thanks for your time today. And uh, I can't wait to hear you know, the rest of your, your music. And, you know, the sooner you do it, the better. But, you know, I suppose you, you need to go through proper channels to get that happening. Hopefully everything, everything aligns for you. Thanks very much for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle. All right. We'll see you again, Hope. Yeah. I'll see you up the track, that's for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Cheers. Love. Thank you. Catch us again. Well, that was a, another great episode with Marlon and Rella uh, about their community and uh, their music. Yeah, what inspires the music. Great hearing that song. I love that song they did, especially acoustic with Black Swan. So next episode, we'll be talking to uh, a young woman by the name of Lydia Fairhall and uh, her music uh, and what inspires their music. And uh, So we're, we're looking forward to that. So I hope to catch you next week when we uh, catch up with Lydia. So I'll catch us later. In a while, Crocodile. A big thank you to Creative Victoria and the Australia Council for the Arts for making this project possible. No, no, no. So they gave to those old family. I got flowers, sugar.